I'm sitting down so you can sit down. Come on. That's good. I'm kind of hobbling around a bit, and so um, can you hear? Is it all right? Yes. No? No. Does it have to be turned on, or is what's the matter? Right into it? Oh, dear. <laughs> now can you hear better? I actually didn't get an offer for my first job, so let's just get the introduction changed a little bit. I happily attended Stanford Law School, and in the process, I met my husband-to-be, John O'Connor, and he was a year behind me in law school. We decided to get married, and I graduated from the law school, and we both liked to eat, and that meant one of us was going to have to work, and since I was out of law school, that was me. And I thought, oh, no problem getting a job. There were at least 40 notices on Stanford's bulletin board at the law school from law firms in California saying, Stanford law graduates, uh, we have this, um, we'd be happy to talk to you about job opportunities, give us a call. And there were 40 different messages from different law firms in California on the bulletin board. So I called every one of those notices. Not a single one would even give me an interview. I said, why? They said, we don't hire women. And that was the way it was. Now, I got out of law school, I guess, about 1952. But isn't that amazing? They wouldn't even talk. And uh, I really did need to get a job. So I, <laughs> I heard that the county attorney in San Mateo County, California, the county seat is in Redwood City, had once had a woman lawyer on his staff. So I thought, well, that's encouraging. I'll go see him. And I made an appointment to see him. In California, they elect the county attorney. And so uh, they're always glad handers. And he gave me an appointment to see him. And I went to meet him. He was very nice, very agreeable. And he said he had indeed had a woman on his staff at one time. And she did well, and he'd be happy to have another. And I had a good resume, and I'd be fine. But the problem he had was that he got his money from the County Board of Supervisors. And he got only so much money a year. And he had spent his money, and he had no more income for the year. So he was not able to hire anybody else. And he was so sorry, because he felt probably I could be hired, but not without any money. And then he said, also, I'll show you around the office, and he did. And he said, as you can see, I don't have a vacant office to put another deputy. So I had to figure something out. And so I said, well, I understand. I said, I know you don't have any money right now to hire anybody, but I'll work for you for nothing until such time as the supervisors give you a little more money. I said, I'll do that. Well, that kind of took his breath away. <laughs> and then I said, and I met your secretary. She's very nice. There's room in her office to put a second desk if she wouldn't object. And that was my first job as a lawyer. No pay, and I put my desk in with the secretary. But I loved my job. It was so interesting. I just liked everything I got to do. It was very exciting for me. And so that's what I did. And it worked out fine. And I don't remember now how long I was there before he managed to find a little money in his account with the county. And um, until I think somebody, somebody, one of the deputies must have left for another job and it opened an office. So everything turned out all right. But it was pretty tough sledding getting that first job. And I felt sorry for the other women who were in law school and getting out and looking for work because there was no real opportunity for women lawyers at that time. I'm reading the new book out by, what's her name, Sharon, who? Yeah, yeah, I've been reading that. And it's a good story. <laughs> you better read it, too. 
but it's amazing how things have changed, and I'm very glad that I was able to be a little bit of that change in America for women. And I was working happily along in my jobs in Arizona when I, I was sitting at, I had become a judge on the Court of Appeals, and I was in my office one afternoon and the telephone rang and I answered and the operator said, uh, this is the White House calling, is um, Justice O'Connor there? I was a justice at that point on the Arizona court. And I said, yes. And they said, well, it's the president calling. Would you put her on? So I said, well, this is she. And I, <laughs> hello. <laughs> And it was Ronald Reagan on the phone. And he said, Sandra? I mean, how about that, first name basis? <laughs> so I said, yes, Mr. President. He said, I'd like to announce your nomination tomorrow for the Supreme Court. Is that OK with you? <laughs> now, that's quote, unquote, what happened. <laughs> and I kind of gulped, and I said, well, yes, Mr. President, I think it is. <laughs> and so that's what happened. <laughs> he had sent some three people from the Attorney General's office out to Arizona to check on my record. I had served in some capacity or the other in all three branches of Arizona's state government in the preceding years. And of course, I'd left some kind of a track record behind. And I think the president had sent people out to uncover uh, press coverage of anything that I had been involved with and to look at papers in connection with my record. And I guess they hadn't uncovered anything that looked scary. So he decided to do that. And uh, I was at home the day they wanted to come out and really talk to me. And my husband and I had built a sun-dried adobe house in the Phoenix area when we moved there in 1957. Now, that was a real challenge, because you can buy burnt adobes. They're sold commonly. But in this country today, it's very hard to go buy sun-dried adobes. Those are the adobe bricks that somebody has made and then dried them in a frame in the sun until they're dry and fairly firm. And that's what we wanted to use. And I met a man who lived on Cattle Track Road in Scottsdale, and he built some sun-dried adobe houses. And he could tell us how to get some sun-dried adobe. So we followed his advice and got some and found a starving young architect who was willing to design a house, even if it was with sun-dried adobes. And so we got this house built, and I just loved it. It was so fun. Until you've seen and touched sun-dried adobe, you probably can't appreciate why I liked it so much. But it looks good, it feels good, and it's wonderful in Arizona's sunshine. It really is. So that's what we used to build our house, and I loved it very much. And when the president made his call, and I agreed to come back to Washington, D.C. We learned that housing prices in D.C. are very high. <laughs> so we had to sell our little sun-dried adobe house and raise a little money so we could get something to live in in D.C. And we did. And um, that was painful to have that happen. And an interesting thing has happened since. And I'll just, I, I'm wandering from my topic, but it's kind of interesting to here, we have formed now in Arizona a, um, a program using our old house. And so it's been purchased back by a nonprofit little organization to support the O'Connor House. And we use it as a place where civil talk leads to civic action. And I like that. Because in the years, 